top of the morning to you. Welcome to Recording Studio Loser. I'm your resident loser, Jeremy. What we're going to be talking about today is mix templates, or templates of any kind, really. I use multiple different kinds of templates in how I work here at the studio all the time. And yeah, they catch a lot of crap sometimes. It can kind of feel like you're cheating a little bit, or you're not giving each individual session the attention that it needs and the uniqueness that it deserves. I see that argument and I hear you. However, I will counter with the fact that there are different ways to utilize templates and how you operate. So what are the main benefits of using templates? Your first one's gonna be efficiency. Recording studios are set up differently depending on where you go. If you come to my studio, you're gonna see one thought process and how to run a recording studio. If you go somewhere else, you're gonna see it totally different. There are similarities. You will see some of the same type of equipment, but how it's set up, the input listing, how, how all that stuff is hooked up to the computer is different. And what a template can do for you is take that part of the process out of your brain. Anything we can get out of the forefront of your thought process while you're in a creative position, like helping an artist realize their vision for a record, the more attention you're gonna be able to pay to the artistic side because you're not exhausted with figuring out the technical stuff all the time. Pulling in things like I.O., things that never ever change, the inputs on your interface itself. Yeah, you might change what's going to what channel. If I'm setting up for a full session and I have a full drum set with anywhere from 12 to 24 microphones on it and guitars and bass and all this stuff, I have my favorite signal chains that will go to each one of those sources. And having a template readily available labeled well so that I know what input things are coming off of I can easily quickly change something and get things set up. That's just one example. Consistency is another one. This is a big one. When you're setting up large sessions like what I'm doing, I say large, people are doing much larger sessions than mine. I'll say this, Nashville style sessions where we have a bunch of players in the room all the same time, the artist is singing, I'm in the control room. There's a lot of things to think about. There's getting all the inputs from the live room out here to the control room where I am. That's, that's one. There's getting all of those inputs game stage correctly. I can do that quickly because all of that's in my template. I know exactly what to reach for. I have comments in the comment section to tell me where to look and check for things that might be potential issues. There's getting those things back to the players in the hearback system. I'm using the Behringer Power Plays. Admittedly, that's a really, really old outdated system at this point but for me it works and it doesn't quite make sense to change that out just yet but all of that is built into my template so it all just works having the talkback mics in the control room ready for those players to have just having those being able to set up on input mode I don't have to worry about where they're routed it just works and as long as I label it correctly and know who's on what mic the job's done a good example, vocal effects while tracking. Some musicians love to hear it while they're tracking, some absolutely hate it and they just wanna hear their dry vocal. I have that set up on an aux that'll just import with my tracking template and it's ready to go. I can listen to it if I want to. I can pull it right out of their ears super quick, but I'm not setting that up every single time. So for consistency's sake, it's not just about having things ready to go and being able to do it quickly. What, what it allows you to do is really focus on the sounds because all these other things around you are just happening. There's a certain amount of factors that aren't changing. Yeah, you can change a preamp, you can change a mic, but you're getting at the heart of the artistic approach to it because the template is doing the hard stuff for you. Obviously there's the organizational side to this. Having things set up in folder tracks makes it so easy. And I'm operating in Pro Tools, but a lot of different DAWs do this. And just being able to organize it so you know where to look for something. That if there's an issue, you can quickly find it. After all, this is a session that someone else is paying for. You're on someone else's dime and you need to be able to troubleshoot really, really quick. And having an organized, predictable session that you've seen a hundred times just makes you that much quicker. The last real benefit that I can see is being creative. One of the last things that a template allows you to do, and I'm gonna get pushback for this, I feel like, but it allows you to be more creative. I hear the point a lot that having a template boxes you in to certain moves. It definitely can do that. I think it more depends how you decide to use your template, what works for your workflow. I want to build my template in a way that all the hard stuff is out of the way and I can focus on 
the artistic vision of what's happening. I have all these tools laid out. I don't have to use them if I don't want to, but them just being there really, really quick. I don't have to go searching through menus. I don't have to rebuild the wheel every single time. It lets me listen to the song and it lets me get to the heart of what the artist wants for the song that much faster. So the main different types of templates that I use in my studio, there's three main ones. The first template that I use is routing. This is a bare bones template that really just exists to get audio where it needs to go. So much time in the session is taken up by just making sure you're getting audio in and then getting audio out to where it needs to go. Think about it in the context of being very, very simplified. One person with one interface. Let's say something like this. Maybe this is something like what you have. Super simple, not a whole lot of ins and outs. That's not a big deal to set up every single time. Now multiply this times 30 and things get a little more complicated. You're not just focused on you being able to hear something. You're not just focused on you being able to record something, but now 10 different people have to hear something <laughs> and it has to be labeled on a personal mixer so that they can pull up what they need to pull up, not just their source, but every other source in the session itself. It has to all be gain staged properly. It has to all be at their fingertips ready without any explanation. That's where a routing template really comes in clutch. As long as I have, and this is the way I have it set up, as long as I have signal coming into Pro Tools, I know it's gonna get everywhere else it needs to go. Just because I have that session already set up and all the complicated routing things are finished for me. It's going to the hearback system. It's going to the effects if it needs to. The instruments are going to the instrumental bus. The vocals are going to the vocal bus. All these things, I can bounce stems super quickly if I want to. I can make a bounce of a song really quickly if I want to. I have it set up so I can print it pre my mastering chain, post the mastering chain. It makes it very, very easy to do whatever you need to do. And that's the whole point of something like this. Building in systems to make you more efficient. The next template would be a mixing template. This is a lot like the routing template and sometimes they kind of coexist. If I have an artist coming in that I know I've worked with in the past and I know their sound, or I know it's similar to a sound that I've gotten with another artist, I'm gonna pull in that mix template because it's almost done. Get rid of the really, really heavy lifting channels that'll cause a lot of latency and they can basically track to the sound of a finished record in their headphones. It makes it so nice. Past that, if you're just getting tracks to mix from an artist that you've never worked with before, having a mix template lets you hear potential issues faster. If I'm getting this all routed into things and I know how I like a kick drum to typically sound, I have all of my EQ RTAs already pulled up so I could see things that might be potential issues. I can diagnose problems quickly. And on the flip side of that, I can get to mixing really quick. This helps immensely on the vocal side of things. You never know what you're gonna need for a vocal to really pop out of a mix. And having all of the vocal effects already done, already routed, my vocal throw is ready to go. My dotted eighth is ready to go. My quarter's ready to go. My whole bar delay is ready to go. And all these reverbs, and then how they interact with each other all that's set up. So you can get to a finished vocal sound from an effects standpoint really, really quickly. The third type of template that I use is a mastering template. And this is probably my most protected template that I have. Not from the standpoint that I want it to be a secret, just that it needs to be consistent. When I'm mastering someone's project, I need things to be extraordinarily consistent. I need to know that those tools that are on my template are ones that I know exactly how to use. Mastering is that final step in quality control. So anything that I'm doing, I have to basically be a ghost. I don't want to be noticed if I'm in there working. Having a template with all those tools already ready to go is a godsend because mastering in and of itself isn't the thing that's going to make you big money in the industry, but you have to be able to do it quickly for that to make sense. One of the things I really like to employ on my mastering chain is a bus that I can quickly solo that just lets me listen to the untreated raw file that the artist sent me. So I can go back and forth really, really quickly between what the artist sent me and what I've done with their song and they're gain matched as close as you can when you're adding things like saturation and compression. That gets down a rabbit hole, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so say you wanna start going down this road, how do you make your own template or templates for different purposes? The first thing is to just work. 
If you're a total noob at this, you shouldn't really be concerned with making a template. Who this is for is the person who wants to get more efficient. Maybe you're just getting out there, just starting to work with people or making your own music, but you wanna up your game, get faster, get more creative with it. A template would really, really help you out. At this point in your career, you already have certain things you just like to do. You have things you pull up your session and these are the same every single time. Look at those systems that you could simplify and have them ready for you. Maybe they don't have to be active. I have a lot of kind of tricks on my templates that are not active, but they can be at the click of a button. Having those things that you can notice that you do all the time, or you want to be able to do all of the time, ready to go. Maybe it's an effect, maybe it's routing, maybe it's being able to print stems super fast. Take a look at what those things are and then make a plan. From there, you need to know that your template is like an organic evolving thing. It's not gonna be the same every single time. What it is, is a method for you to improve your workflow, for you to improve your ear, for you to improve your processes. So it's going to constantly grow and change. Imagine this, every project that you've worked on, you're consistently getting better and better every time you do something. What a template allows you to do is basically use your previous best, your previous ending point that you were super proud of as the starting point for the next project. So you have a level of consistency here between projects, but you're also giving yourself all of this time that you don't have to waste rebuilding this wheel over here and now you're gonna get better. Of course, you wanna be saving and updating this template constantly. I normally save it by artist and I know those sounds that I'm going for, but I also have my own personal writing templates that I use just for me that have all of my kind of writing tools that I know will get me in a creative mindset quickly. They're completely useless from a mixing standpoint. It is just for the creative process for me. So you can see all these different things you can be doing. By the way guys, if you are interested in templates, I have a company worship stream audio that specializes in building templates for broadcast. And the one that I used for the longest time is available for purchase. Worshipstreamaudio.com. You could not only use that for live broadcasting, almost anything you want, but it does have a lot of things that I implement in my day-to-day -day templates. And if you're interested in that, you wanna go check it out, go check it out. Right now there's a Pro Tools version, but there will be other DAWs available. And if you're interested in me making one for your particular DAW, please let me know, I can do that. Anyway, back to the video. So tips for using your mix templates effectively. One, you wanna make sure they are adaptable. Don't be afraid to change something. If it needs to be changed, it needs to be changed. Maybe something was right for one project, but it's not for this one, and that's okay. This thing is meant to change, it's meant to be organic. Use it how you need to. Experiment with your template. If you wanna try something out, try it. I've learned so much about different DAWs, just having a functioning template and not worrying about the base level application that you're working with in, but now you can really do some advanced things. One way to do this effectively is to build in systems that are beside what you actually need in the session to function, specifically to experiment and enhance what you already have. Honestly, this stops with your imagination. So I use templates constantly while I'm working. Honestly, it's annoying if I don't have the ability to use one because I lean on them so heavily for what I do on a day-to-day -day basis here at the studio. It's part of that building a whole second brain that thinks for you type of mentality with a template. Not letting yourself be bogged down by all of the things that you don't have to worry about, but just get to the making of the music and that's it. Anyway guys, if you like this one, hit the like button, subscribe if you like what we're doing. I'm Resident Loser Jeremy. I'll see you in the next one.